Say uh, chapter 9, chapter 9, the book of Hosea. I want to read from verse 1 down through verse 5. And you read silently while I read aloud. Now this is to Israel, but we can get a lesson from it. Rejoice not, O Israel, for joy as other people. For thou hast gone a-whoring from thy God. Thou hast loved a reward upon every corn floor. The floor and the wine press shall not feed them. And the new wine shall fail in her. They shall not dwell in the Lord's land. But Ephraim shall return unto Egypt. And they shall eat the unclean things of Asherah. <clears throat> they shall not offer wine offerings to the Lord neither shall they be pleasing unto him their sacrifice shall be unto them as the bread of mourners all that eat thereof shall be polluted for their bread for their souls shall not come into the house of the Lord now verse 5 notice in particular what will you do in the solemn day and in the day of the feast of the Lord, our Father and our dear loving Lord, thank you for thy word. Yes. Now God, take us tonight and use us for your glory. Save that soul that's nearest hell. Draw that backslider back home to thee. Revive us all. Get glory to thy name. Edify the church. We'll thank you and praise you for it, for Christ's sake. Amen and amen. You may be seated. <laughs> We're living in a time today when people will drive for thousands of miles, go to any length to be simply amused. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with laughter. I get a lot of criticism. I'm not trying to be a pulpit comedian. I believe a merry heart doth good like a medicine. Amen. Nothing wrong with laughter. God built it into us. Amen. God gave that to us. Nothing wrong with it. You're not, you're not sinning when you laugh. Right. But now notice we will go to even extremes on that. We find ourselves being amused today even by vulgarity. Four letter words somehow today strike a little funny note in some people's hearts. We even find ourselves laughing at a man so intoxicated by alcohol that he staggers senselessly down a road and falls in a ditch. We find even that funny. But God here is now addressing Israel. Israel is now in a state of utter backsliding. A state of utter indifference toward God. And God begins to speak to Israel. And his first admonition to Israel said, Rejoice not. The time of your joy, the time of your laughter, the time of your merriment is now past. Rejoice not, O Israel, for joy. I, I don't want you to do that. And then God goes ahead and exhorts Israel and tells them what's the matter. Now don't fuss at me and don't tell me that I have no business preaching this. I know that the Old Testament is a schoolmaster. I know that it's types and shadows. I know that. So tonight I'm trying to get you to draw out of the well of the Old Testament an admonition from God that I know can be of help to you if you let it. Now God said don't rejoice Israel. And then down in verse 5, he asked a very important question. 
He said, what will you do in that solemn day? I want to ask you, Israel, God said, now that your laughing is over, now that your time of merriment is over, now that your time of joy is past, and I've told you there's a solemn day coming, God said to Israel, what are you going to do in that solemn day? It's going to get solemn. You'll not want to hear Lucy. You'll not want to hear Gleason. You'll not want to hear hope. It's not going to be a time, God said, of merriment and gleefulness. God said it's going to be a time of solemnness. Tonight, I want to preach on this subject. What will you do in that solemn day? Some of you, my dear friend, God has dealt with you in love. God in his tender mercy has tried to draw you. God in his love and kindness has reached out through preaching, through godly testimonies, through some little gospel tract that somebody handed you. And God in his love has tried to draw you to himself. And always you've rejected. I think of the book of Proverbs where God said, you said it in all, all of my counsel and would none of my reproof. God said, I'm going to laugh when your fear comes and your mind going to balk. I'm going to tell you, friend, I believe there is people that God's tired of your throwing his son aside and putting his blood under your feet and counting them an unholy thing. I believe God is about to bring a solemn day into some of your lives. Let me deal with some solemn days tonight. First, let me ask you what? Are you going to do in that solemn day of sickness? I'm not talking about just a bad cold. I'm not talking about a sinus drainage. I'm not talking about a, a headache. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you go down to that doctor and he examines you very carefully. The stethoscope is placed time and again as he listens and you can hear a very solemn mm, mm. and then he said I believe you need some x-rays and he looks at the x-rays and his hand moves over shadows in the x-rays and he said let me listen again and after blood has been drawn after the heart has been checked and after other examinations have been taken, the doctor comes to you and said, I've got some bad news for you. I've got some bad news for you. I'm afraid that I've got to tell you that you have inoperable cancer. There's nothing that a knife can do for you. I wonder drugs. I can't reach it. Our scientific knowledge is already at its limits. I want to ask you, friend, it's not going to be a funny joke you're going to want to hear then. It's not going to be somebody tune in, Lucy, then. It's going to be a solemn day then. I'm going to tell you there will be a fear that will grab you like you never had in your life. Your stomach will feel like rocks is laying in it and your heart will begin to pound. You've had good health and God has blessed you and been kind to you. And every time the Holy Ghost came to you, you'd shut him out. You'd run out the door. You'd turn the television or radio off. You didn't want no preachers to come to see you. But suddenly, there's a solemn day now and the picture has changed. I believe myself you're going to want somebody to tell you about Jesus. Amen. 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 What are you going to do in that solemn day? I know you don't like to think about it, do you? You don't like to even talk about it, do you? You like to think you'll always be healthy. You don't like to think of an inoperable cancer. 
You know, right there, a doctor said that lung's already gone. I've got a brother-in-law down in Marietta now. And maybe tonight he's rolling in the floor like a dog. They've already took one of his kidneys out. It's already gone. Big old scars. Oh, there was a time he was a healthy man. There was a time, I'll tell you right now, the kiss of youth was all over him. But now his body's already started turning yellow. Let me tell you something, Wren. You may have been a smart aleck up to now. Did you know the devil can make a smart aleck out of you? The devil can tell you, ah, oh, there comes that preacher. There comes that bunch from the church. Tell them you don't want to talk to them. But I'm going to tell you right now, when that solemn day of sickness comes, I got a sneaking feeling when the doctors delivered his ultimatum to you and his final a diagnosis, I got a sneaking idea you won't be as ready to run the preacher off the next time. Amen? Amen. 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 I don't believe you're going to want to run him off. I remember while I lived in Chattanooga pastoring a church. There was a man, I believe he was one of the big one of the biggest men I've ever met in my life. He was a muscle man. He worked out constantly. Little boys, he could catch them. They'd just stand around and look at him. Muscles, just he didn't have to do like this. They just there. They're just huge muscles all over him. And he'd have on a, a short sleeve shirt. And little boys would just be standing like this, mouth open. And he'd catch them doing that. And I saw him just flex his muscles and split the sleeve of his shirt, the, the cloth, just, uh, just part. Yeah, he couldn't stand it. And I saw him, him kids be standing there and have a shirt button and start flexing his chest muscles. And all the buttons just jump right off. And the little boy said, oh. <laughs> you never saw anything like it in your life. And I loved him, big old giant of a man. And I'd walk up to him and I'd say, I sure wish you were saved. I love you. He never cursed in front of me. He wouldn't even smoke in front of me. And nobody else dared to curse in front of me. He'd have flipped their heads off. He was a man. And I'd walk up to him and I'd call him by name and I'd say, sure wish you're saved. And you know, somebody had heard him in the church years before that. You know what? I'm six foot three inches, wait, that time around 230. But you know what he'd do, preacher? He'd put them big old arms around me and take my feet and pick them up off the ground. Hold me like that. I just trying to breathe, you know. And he'd say, preacher, let me tell you a funny one. It's not very dirty. I said, I don't want to hear it. And you know what? He'd hold me there. He said, preacher, I don't want. He said, hey, fellas, the preacher's trying to get me to get religion. Just laugh, you know, have the biggest time you ever saw in the world. Oh, just everything was so funny. And after a while, they let me down. The many a time you let me down. He said, preacher, I love you for trying to talk to me. I've had him slip 20 and $30 in my pocket. And said, preacher, you pray for me. But everything was a big old joke to him. It's a big old ha 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 ha. Nothing was ever taken serious. No solemn day had come in his life. But one day he was changing jobs. And the doctors, or the, the, he had to go for a physical examination to move from one job to another. And then while he got him there, he said to the doctor, said, you ever see a stupid thing in your life? He said, there's not a healthier man alive than I am. He said, what do you mean trying to examine me? And they said, well, when we, since we've got you in here, we're just going to run the works on you and have a full physical. He just died laughing. They put him in there, and a little nurse came to draw some blood. <laughs> oh, he said, just get all you want. I got gallons of it. <laughs> yes, sir. Just help yourself. <laughs> she drew some blood and said, thank you, sir, and went away. And soon she came back again and said, Sir, I've got to get some more. Ha! <laughs> I ah, said, Just put a spigot in there and, and just turn it on and off. Just get all you want. I got all good blood. See, some of you right now don't realize how close you are to a solemn day. Your life is just about maybe over. 
Your smart aleck remarks. Remember that last preacher you slammed the door in his face? Remember that last preacher you cut off of the radio? Honey, that may be just about over. Amen. And after a while, the doctor came in and said, well, I, they, they the little girls messed up. They've kind of done something wrong. Said, I've got to get some blood. He said, oh, doc, just get you a bunch of it while you're here. Get you a bottle full of it. The doctor drew some blood and about an hour and a half or two hours came back. And this time, this big giant's wife was with the doctor. And she was a weeping. They tell me that that man, like a bullet, stepped on that bed. Said, honey, who's hurt you? Who's hurt you? Somebody done something to you? And she said, honey, please lay down. No, sir, I'll, if somebody hurts you, I'll kill them. I'll pull their head over their shoulders. She said, honey, please lay down. He finally sat down on the side of the bed. The doctor said, I've got some terrible news for you. Said the first time we drew blood, we got other specialists in. And said the next time we got him in, thinking maybe there was a mistake. And said this time there was four specialists. Said we'd have to ordinarily take more mile. We'd have to run extensive tests, but said there's no doubt about it. You've got the most swift kind of leukemia. Said, oh, it's traveling fast. Suddenly, I lived in East Chattanooga. My phone rang. And this little wife was on the phone, said, Preacher, told her husband's name, said, He's calling for you. I got in my car and ran as fast as I could get there. I went up to the seventh floor and forgot the number of the room. I ran down the hall looking in every room. And suddenly I came to the room. There was that little wife standing at the foot of the bed. In the bed with a sheet pulled up over him like a little scared boy. Was a man, the whole bed was shaking. See, a solemn day has a way of getting that smart elekness out of it. A solemn day of sickness. I don't mean a bad cold. I mean, honey, when God said, boy, I'm going to get your attention one way or another, all of a sudden, you're not near the big laughing boy or girl you used to be. Amen? And I went into that room that day, and his wife, she's a little lady, a godly woman, she loved the Lord. And she was standing there weeping when she saw me come in. I walked over and pulled the sheet down from his face. And he said, pre pre Preacher, oh, preacher, I'm a dying. I'm a dying. Oh, preacher, I'm a dying. How many of you know what he asked me next? He said, preacher, see, here I stand. I'm the man that he picked his feet up off of the ground. I'm the man that he laughed off. I'm the man that he didn't want to hear about God. I'm the man he wanted to tell a funny joke. But all of a sudden, the picture's changed. And now he said, preacher, I know I've laughed. I know I've made fun, but preacher, will you tell me how to be saved one more time? Amen. Amen. Honey, when that solemn day comes, you won't be hard to lead to Jesus. When that solemn day comes, you won't be a smart aleck. You know, I took my little New Testament and turn to the word of God where it said the scriptures hath concluded all under sin. It was so easy to point out to him that he was a sinner. It was so easy to point out to him that he was lost. And all of a sudden he grabbed my hand and said, Oh, preacher blue, I see it. I see it if I just ask Jesus to come into my heart and forgive me, he'll do it, won't he? I said he will. Amen. 
a big old giant of a man grabbed my arm and said, Preacher, will you pray with me? And he said, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm a wicked old sinner. And Lord Jesus, will you come into my heart and save me? Amen. How many of you know what Jesus did right then? Yeah. 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 He touched me. Oh, he touched me. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yes. That big old giant got saved. Blood, a few days, began to come through his very skin. Big old blue spots would break out on him. The flash began to drop off so fast that his skin just laid like cloth in the bed. He told his wife one day, he said, Honey, when you come back from home, bring me some of them footsteps. She said, What, darling? He said, bring me some footsteps. He, she said, sweetheart, I don't know what you mean. She said, you know, them footsteps you order from Oliver B. Green. He's talking about gospel tracks. He called them footsteps. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Doctors had come in. And he won doctors for Jesus. Oh, he was one of the worst singers I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Honest, his voice sounded like he was cutting his throat without putting any medicine on him. But he loved, after he got saved, his favorite song was John Newton's Amazing Grace. And he'd have me standing there by that bedside, we'd sing it over and over. And him singing as loud as he could. The last song he sang, he gathered the nurses and doctors around his bed and they sang Amazing Grace. At his funeral was doctors and nurses. He'd won to Jesus. Let me tell you something. A solemn day of sickness can turn your life around. Amen. You said, I'll tell you right now, I'm tough, buddy. Go ahead, touch hog. Go ahead, hot rock. Go ahead, big hog. Go on. But I got news for you. When that cold eyes of professionalism looks you in the eye and said, we can't do no more. You ain't gonna be tough, boy. Right. Yeah. You ain't tough. You just think you're tough. Amen? You said, I think I'll leave. If, you was, if you're so tough, why don't you stay? Hey. If you're that tough, I believe I'd stay and let me finish. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Hey. If you leave now, they're going to know you ain't tough. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. See, you ain't tough. You can't even stand and take it. Amen. Amen. You've cussed preachers. You've lied on the church and you think everybody's bad, but now then God's beginning to let the Holy Ghost take a hold of you and you ain't near as tough as you're letting on. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That solemn day of sickness. My brother-in-law, I'm going to give his address tomorrow night. He's saved. I'm going to give him his address tomorrow night. I do everywhere I go. People from all over the United States, his walls are covered in get well cards. People he's never met writes him letters. And he'll walk around as best he can, looking up there and say, boy, ain't that nice of him? Ain't that nice of him? Ain't that sweet of him? They don't even know me. See, a solemn day of sickness can make a different person out of you. Amen. Am I right? Amen. 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 Some of you right now, they've had to beg you to get you into church, haven't they? You've done everything but shake your fist in the face of God. Here you sit tonight, critical of everything. But a solemn day of sickness can make a softy out of you. Right. That's true. Yes. Am I right? Is there anybody here tonight that's, that's been at that spot where I'm talking about? 
that maybe a solemn day of sickness has kind of changed you a little bit. Anybody here ever been that way? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It sure, you that read and think you're really rough, you ain't rough. A solemn day of sickness. Then next of all, there's the solemn day of death. God said it's appointed unto man once to die. Right. God said it's appointed unto man once to die. That solemn day of death. Death. What a strange word. Did you ever think how strange it is? Listen to it. Death. Whisper it. Death. So final. Sound so. Death. Everybody say it together. Here we go. Dead. Say it again. Dead. <coughs> Did you ever notice in funeral homes? People whisper. You see a string of cars coming down the road with their lights on. You know what those lights are saying? Death. It said somebody's heart stopped. It said that they took their bodies to the funeral home and tried to pull away the scars where pain had pulled and drawn their face. And finally, death reached its cold fingers out and said, It's time. Say it with me again. Death. See, you don't even want to say it, do you? It's something that walks into your homes and reaches in the cribs and gets your babies. It's something that tracks that dear old gray-haired mother that you love so well. Tracks her down. And one day she lies still. It's something that'll take that young son with a kiss of you still on his face. Death. It's something when it comes, there's all the televisions and radios are cut off in your house. No joking. Why? Death has come. It's on my trail right now. It's on your trail right now. It's tracking you. Oh, it's going to find you. It's going to find you. Am I right? Say amen. Death. Say it with me again. Death. It's tracking you like a foxhound. It's sniffing at your trail. You don't have to be just old to die. You can be young. Death is on your trail. I'm saying death. That solemn day of death is looking you out. You can be walking along with a crowd and it can reach over and get you and leave the rest of them. You may have brushed shoulders with it today and didn't even know it. It may be sitting down yonder on the side of the highway waiting for you right now. It may be in your house after your body is laid down. And your eyes are closed in the morning. The family will say, we found them dead in the bed. The solemn day of death. No laughing tonight, is there, preacher? You said, preacher, Blue, I don't like to think like this. You better think like this. You better get ready for this hour. You said, I wouldn't be ready if death came tonight. That's why I'm trying to warn you. Let's say, for instance, the solemn day of sickness has come. And now the doctor says to the family, I've done all I can for them here at home. We've got to take them to the hospital. 
Oh, you said, I'll get better and come back home, but they put you in the hospital. The doctor tries to give you some hope, but there's none. His voice is empty, and you can tell it when he says it. The little nurse comes to you with a little container, and it's got some white pills in it. She said, drink it and take some water. And suddenly you find yourself drifting away. You begin to lose a sense of touch. The feeling is not there like it used to be. You'd always planned a deathbed repentance, hadn't you? You was going to get right before you died, wasn't you? You are going to get saved just before you died, wasn't you? And suddenly you're drifting away. You said, don't you believe a person can get saved on the deathbed? Yes, sir, but I don't recommend it. And suddenly you wake up again. And the little nurse is standing there and says, it's time for your medicine. Suddenly there's something strange. You feel tubes down your nose. And somehow you get your hand to your face. And the cheeks that used to be round and rosy. You feel them hollow and empty. You rub your hand over where your eyes were. And now the eyes is deep set in a bony socket. And the nurse pours the pills down your throat and you <sighs> drift away again. Death has walked up by your bedside. And now you wake again and you hear a sound and wonder what it is. It sounds like this. <sighs> And the doctor is standing, your eyes are dim and your tongue is wobbling around and in your mouth looking for a place to lay down. You're trying to say, somebody pray for me. But no words come out. No words. Suddenly the doctor is pressing the stethoscope harder. <coughs> and your eyes start losing their vision as they roll back in the sockets of your head. It's a solemn day now. No laughing, is there? <coughs> Suddenly you want to scream. Or something's happening. The doctor starts pulling a sheet up over your face. <coughs> and suddenly you're screaming like you've never heard. It's getting hot. Screaming, give me a glass of water. It's that place called hell that you laughed at that preacher about. It's that place that you so had said to those that you didn't like, go to hell. And now the Bible said hell from beneath is moved to meet thee at thy coming. The solemn day of death. What you going to do? Hey! Hey! What you going to do? Preachers give all their calls and you said, I ain't going tonight. I ain't going to be down that old front. I ain't going to get down on my knees. But right now at that solemn day of death, you'd give 10 million lifetimes if you could just answer one more altar call. Amen. One more altar. Well, you said, that's it, preacher. What else are you going to preach on? Oh, I'm not finished. I only quoted part of a verse a while ago. The Bible said it's appointed unto a man once to die. 
If that was the end of it, like some cults and the denomination says, the man dies like a dog and the grave's hell, if that was all, then that, that, that wouldn't be so bad. But the Bible said after this, the judgment. Amen. Am I right, preacher? Yes. Amen. The solemn day of judgment when you're going to have to see God. And in the book of Proverbs, he said he's going to laugh. You turned his son down in this life. You had no time for God. You hated the church. You didn't like preachers. You said all of them's bad. But now the solemn day of judgment, God's going to remind you of every time you turn every word of the gospel down. The time you turn that radio preacher off. The time you wadded up that gospel track and threw it down. And let me say to some of you here tonight. To you that are only church members and never been saved, you're going to be in that crowd. You put on and acted like and pretended all of your life. And everybody thought you was the greatest thing since the wheel. But your pretending is going to come to an end right there. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. You've acted so professionally, everybody said if that's only if there's one person going to make it to heaven, that one is. But honey, right then and there, your playing's going to play out. Right. 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 <clears throat> Preacher, you listen to me tonight. God spoke to my heart this afternoon and told me to bring this message. This crowd is as quiet as a cemetery. There's somebody here tonight that God spoke to your heart. And you've already got it made up in your mind. You're going to say no to God. You better not do it. Don't do it. I'm trying to help you tonight. Don't do it. If you're a pretending church member that's never been saved, you better get saved tonight. If you're somebody here tonight... You're lost, you know it, you're on your way to hell. God's bringing a solemn day in your life. Preacher, I've been preaching 42 years. Travel all over the world preaching the gospel. Only five times in my life that I've ever felt like I feel right now. Before you head out of that door tonight lost, I tell you right now, you better stop and think. Right. Somebody God's dealing. I'm not going to tell you you're going to die tonight. I'm not that kind of a preacher. But I'm afraid somebody's about to mess up tonight. Somebody's about to mess up. God said there is a sin unto death. Personally, I believe, and a lot of preachers don't agree with me. I believe there's a line you can cross. I believe there's a deadline. Don't laugh God off tonight. Don't mock God tonight. Well, you said, I don't like you. I'm not trying to get you to like me. I'm trying to tell you there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Amen. Amen. Be real quiet just a minute. Are you aware of the presence of God like I am? God's in this place tonight. Amen. God's here tonight. And I'm not trying to scare you, but somebody, before you jump up out of that seat in a sarcastic and a belligerent way and start out that door, you better stop and think. God may be about to bring a solemn day in your life. Preacher, somebody's in trouble. I ain't joking. I've never been more serious in my life. Somebody better listen to God tonight. Death. Death. I want them to come to the instruments right now. I want every head bowed. I want every eye closed. I want every Christian to pray. Nobody looking around. Play very softly, ma'am. Very softly. 
just as I am, sir, without one clue. My dear friend, please don't put God off tonight. I want to ask you one more time, what are you going to do in that solemn day? What are you going to do in that solemn day? God spoke to you tonight, don't turn him down. I wonder who there is among you tonight that will raise your hand and say, Preacher, I wouldn't want to die in the shape I'm in. I wouldn't want to meet God like this. Would you raise your hand up right now and say, Pray for me. Slip it up right now. I, I'm, I'm waiting for that hand to go up and say, Brother Blue, I wouldn't want to meet God like this. Raise it up right quick. Raise it up right quick. Yes. Yes, I see it, son. Take it down. I wonder if there's another one right quick. Somebody. I know God's not lied to me. I wonder, would you raise that hand and say, pray for me, preacher. I wouldn't want to die in the shape I'm in. Yes, I saw it. Yes, sir, I see it. Mister, I've been praying for you all week. I wonder how many more times you're going to raise your hand and sit still. God's not joking with you, sir. He means business. I wonder if there's another hand that'll go up and say, pray for me. I wouldn't want to die in the shape I'm in. I'm not right with God. Yes, I saw that hand. I wonder if there's another one. Come on, folks. Listen, God's as sure dealing with hearts tonight as I'm standing here. Raise that hand up right now. Our Father, dear Lord, tonight there's hands went up. They've said, I'm lost. I wouldn't want to die in the shape I'm in. God help them tonight to find their way to an old-fashioned altar. And let this pastor or somebody with the Word of God take it and show them how to get saved. That man back there, Lord, he's not a little boy no more. One of these nights, he's going to raise his hand the last time. I don't know what the world is waiting on. I have no idea. I have no idea, but God, I feel in my heart that man's about to mess up. Have your way, I pray right now tonight as we stand and sing the invitation for Christ's sake. Amen. Let's stand again. Will you come?